You're watching Tang Tools Muscle Garage, the home of New Zealand's toughest muscle cars, hot rods and street machines. Muscle Garage is proudly brought to you by Teng Tools in association with Mount Shop, Maguire's and Nidakar. Coming up, Wine Country Wide Out Upper's biggest little car show, Cruise Martinborough. We strike Ford and Edsel Gold in the hills of Wellington and we drop by Cromwell's massive mainland car show. But first, the nice people at Maguire's sent us to Surfside Tairua to hunt down Ian Rainbow's road and race ready 50 Chev Deluxe. It must have been early 90s, I bought a personalised plate that said Easy 11s. And I'm back in the 90s, early 90s, 11 second streetcar was pretty quick. Got the plate, ready to go. Originally I wanted to put a 409 in it. She runs fine, my 409. Um, so I bought a couple of 409s out of the States. And when the chassis turned up from Art Morrison, um, it looked too state of the art. I couldn't put a dirty old 4 It was not that they're dirty, but I couldn't put a 409 in the chassis. It just didn't seem fitting enough. So my very good friend Richard Appington said that, you know, you should look at these new 572s they're building now. So you know, the rest is history. So that's the way it went. Apart from the fact the first time we took it to the drags, which was the day after it got its first warrant, took the street tyres off it, put the Who's here, Quick Time Pro slicks or cheetah slicks on the back, pulled in a BP um, Papakura on the motorway, filled it with the best pump gas you could get, went to the drags and it ran a 10.9. <laughs> so we couldn't use my 11 second plate anymore, could we? Uh, I wasn't disappointed of course, but I didn't think it would go that fast. So anyway, it's got faster. It has. What you're looking at today is a real deal, street-driven nine-second car. Clearly we're a fair way from Chev's factory offering and Ian would know. I bought this car in the early 80s and um, it was stock then. I bought it sight unseen off a very good friend of mine in the South Island and uh, had it shipped up to Auckland and we went and picked it up from the um, transport yard and I mean it was original 50 Chev. It drove like a pig. I mean there was three turns locked to lock just to keep it going straight down the motorway so it lasted about two weeks like that and then I tore it apart and put a 350 Chev in it and a turbo 350 10 bolt rear end um, Falcon power steer box in it and drove it. Back in the 80s um, this was one of our only cars. My wife used to take the kids to school in it. From there the coupe was actually sold. Yep, but on the provision Ian would have first dibs should the new owner part ways with it. He would eventually get that chance, although the Chev was in quite a different state by then. And by that, we mean in lots of pieces, with many missing altogether. Ian found himself with a project, and if it was going back together, there would be some changes. Big ones. Ah, uh, Morrison, they've got a big engineering team, they've got drafts, and they know how chassis work. Pro Street's got big back tyres, it still drives around corners with ease. It stops properly, it steers properly, you can sit there, it's as docile as hell. You just cruise, it's just easy. On the strip, it, you know, it gets your attention, but I've never had two hands on the steering wheel on the strip yet either. I just pull gears and like, go through the top end, grab the steering wheel and that's it. One hand. Claiming a large chunk of real estate between those Art Morrison beams is one 572 cube big block chef, bolted together by Dave Moyle at Pro Street Automotive. The thoroughly tickled world block mated to Merlin three heads and topped by a big dominator carb and a 400 horse spray of NOS when required. Serious stuff. But on the street, it's well behaved, almost sedate. tried to get it as quiet as possible so we built our own mufflers um, myself and a friend of mine Laurie Smith we did a lot of work on the car and one thing we did was make the mufflers as big as we could to fit in the slot and, and just to keep the thing quiet and of course I am getting old. And while Ian's clocked a best ET of 9.9 .9 at 136 miles per hour perhaps the real story is the 10.1 without the giggle gas Clearly, there's a lot left in the Chev if lower digits was its number one priority. But remember, 
This is first and foremost a road car, not a dedicated quarter mile weapon. A genuine street and strip combo. We're still struggling. It's not easy. Um, the planets aren't aligned. <laughs> well, when they do align, it might go a lot faster, but you know, you just got to keep doing it. And I don't race very often either. I race twice a year, Father's Day and, and Nostalgia Drags. And didn't realise it was going to go so fast, so um, we have to bolt the cage and all the upholstery has to come out. Um, it's a day job, changing from race trim back to street and vice versa, so, you know. Yeah, if I hadn't known it was going to go so fast, I would have built a, like a six-point cage into it, but um, I didn't. People set out getting drawings done of cars they want and all the rest of it, but um, I don't know, it just morphed over the years, I suppose. It just happened. Right, thanks to our mates at Nidakar, we're off to Cruise Martinborough. What is Cruise Martinborough? Well, it's a blend of cruising, car displays, live entertainment, and even a wee bit of drag action, held over four days in the Wairarapa's wine capital. Now in its fourth year, it's an event that has grown a lot, sure, but its success lies in staying small-ish. The magic number is probably 400, 450 max, ever. I know how it works, people want to keep coming because they hear from other people how good it is and then all of a sudden you do have that problem of hello we're eight, nine, a thousand. So even though there are cars parked outside the closure now, people still will register because there's, there's great things happening like the, the drags on Friday and different cruises that not everyone can attend. And while the town of Martinborough gets its name on the poster, so too does the word cruise. There's not a lot of dust settling around here. Thursday started with a cruise to Lake Ferry, which is quite cool. We were all parked up on the ocean side, and you can see the South Island, so it's quite a picturesque spot. Um, and Friday, of course, is a big hit uh, with the drag racing at the Marston Motorplex, local drag strip at a, on a back doorstep, so that's awesome. And the feedback, you know, people just can't believe what they can do. Um, we're not drag cars, you know, and it is only the first 200 metres, but the smiles um, after leaving that place is, is always a big hit. Um, and of course, yeah, Saturday show day is big where we are today, but um, yeah, it's not all about just sitting around, it's all about a lot of driving too, so it's got a nice mix, yeah. It's a four day event, uh, it's a holiday, you can get out of Auckland for a while and come down the beautiful parts of the country like Martin Burrow, etc. Vineyards, um, just great scenery and uh, it's got the whole package for me. Yeah, it's a good relaxed and, and well organised event. And coming out here to the drag strips, it's a bit special as well. I've got to give it to uh, to the people that organise this, uh, it's it's an awesome day. So it's been an awesome week. I did it last year, and I'll do it next year. And the, and the, the drag strip here is just a bonus, you know. It's just, this is so much fun. As we keep hearing, the chance to try your hand and right foot at flag drop sprints clearly a highlight for many. Some use the opportunity to see what their road car could do, while others, possibly unintentionally, gave power skids a go. Others, just plain old cheap. Times weren't important. These vehicles were driven to and from the track as well as over much of the Wairarapa. But when they finally did stop, they made for quite a sight too. Among them, last year's top judged car. 56 Chev, 210, four door hardtop. Bought it in its worn out condition from Cruising Customs in Palmerston. I'm going to keep it original for sure until JR got involved and said, oh, you do this and you do that. And the end result there to be driven. We drive it. We've done 10,000 miles in uh, the last five years, so uh, we use it. Built as a classic and muscle car event, there's a fair bit of wiggle room. An Aston Martin sighting was made again, joined by a few future classics from the US of A. 2017 um, Roush, stage two, phase three, supercharged, uh, Coyote. Uh, ran into a bit of bad luck after a while and um, we ended up putting a new motor in it. Uh, it's now got the 5 litre Illuminator, uh, low compression. It's got a Whipple 2900. It's been dynoed at 640 kilowatt at the flywheel and uh, 1114 newton metres of torque. It's got extra um, beefed up brakes and uh, suspension, cross members and uh, drive shaft which was supposed to go on it which isn't on at the moment still got the original two piece but uh, there is an aluminium drive shaft ready to place on it and running nitto tires 
Although a potent performer from the get-go, a bit of oil starvation in the heat of battle meant the original motor was relieved of command, fitting its replacement kick-starting a bit of a flow-on effect at the hands of well-known Auckland Mustang modders CTB Performance, the Phase 3 emerging a different beast again. I'm not a hardened um, Ford man, but I sort of, uh, I've had a lot of Fords and uh, I wanted an earlier model Mustang, but um, I like the, uh, all the modern electronics and traction control and the braking. It's really um, user friendly because uh, you can idle down Queen Street, stop at the lights, it's not um, trying to shake you out of the car and the motor keeps running of course, nice and smooth and the power's there with the supercharger when you want it and uh, it's pretty instant. Yeah. So uh, it goes from uh, grandma's car to um, a wild beast. Amazing results, even at full sight. You're back with Teng Tools Muscle Garage, proudly brought to you by Teng Tools, in association with Mount Shop, Meguiar's and Nita Car. Summer on the mainland isn't short of big car shows. Rangiora's Muscle Car Madness tops them all for sheer size over its three official days, but if one day deals are your thing, the 650 and change worth of cars to roll into Cromwell's classic car and hot rod show is hard to beat. The Central Otago event sits alongside the Kawaro River. Hosted by the Southland Ford Falcon Club, it's worth getting there early, not just for power parking privileges, but with the mercury hitting the mid-30s, anything resembling shade was in hot demand. The not-so-big secret to the show's success is its location. Not just very scenic, Cromwell is also central for the Lower South, and as such attracts a turnout from far and wide, and plenty of variety at that. So if cool cars and hot weather are your thing, you know the deal. The next Cromwell Classic Car and Hot Rod Show hits town in January 2019. Bring sunscreen. Right, thanks to Nita Car, we're back to Cruise Martinborough. Four days of prowling the White Arapa with car displays and flag drop drags. Saturday is the main show day in Martinborough's Town Square. But in the name of making an entrance, the convoy files in en masse from the nearby sports grounds. Amongst the procession, Bruce Dayton in his Dodge Charger. Uh, 1969 Dodge Charger, uh, 440 in four-speed manual gearbox and uh, eight and three-quarter diff. Yeah, a little bit of work done on the motor. It's got um, forged pistons and H-beam con rods and a few bits and pieces, it goes okay. I've had it for three years, but I've had it on the road for one year. The first time I've had it on the road was this event last year, the first time down here. I actually ended up um, building one for a mate. I did uh, fix a few cars and I, I built one for a mate of mine and then one came up for sale a bit later and I thought that's quite cool. I want have a go and do one. So yep, yeah, bought the charger and quite pleased with it. It came in sort of not very good condition. I've, I've started again, done the whole thing again, but um, yeah, ended up getting the wheels from, from 
from America I had to get those made to fit over the brakes that I got and bits and pieces like that but no it seems to it's all come together pretty good. Um, it's still a 1969 car of course but um, oh, the, the brake upgrade it stops like a new one but um, yeah still yeah you gotta be awake when you're driving it but no it's, it's not too bad for, for its year. Yeah. A local car, and one was at the very pointy end of Friday's strip times, was Brent's 64. It's a 1964 Chevrolet Bel Air. Um, I have a 490 cubic inch big block in it uh, with a Pro Charger uh, on nitrous. Uh, I haven't got the nitrous here today though, but it doesn't matter, it still goes well. Uh, it's got a Turbo 400 from Chuck Man, one of his transmissions, and uh, I put a 12 volt rear end in it with chromoly axles and chromoly drive shafts. I remember seeing it years ago on Trade Me and they wanted too much for it, they wanted about 38,000 and then it uh, came up on Trade Me for one week only at 21,000. So when I went and had a look at it, I, yeah, I fell in love with it and yeah, told mum when I got home. And Brent's clearly pretty keen on the 64, he's built it twice. Crashed it a year ago, uh, almost to the date and um, it's taken me this 12 months to resurrect it with the help of a lot of other people. And uh, yeah, we're out here today enjoying it. It's a good cruiser, it's a good street car, and it's a real sleeper. You know, there's not many people that uh, realise there's uh, 645 horsepower rear wheel horsepower in that car, you know, and, and that's before the nitrous. If you've got the nitrous, it just gives you a good kick in the ass and, and you're off, you know. But uh, I had it down the strip once and it did 11.2 seconds and do a headwind, so I think that's fast enough, yeah, that's, that's oodles. And although Friday's relaxed racing wasn't super scientific, and only to 200 metres, Brent duly dealt to a big chunk of the field. Yeah, I've had just about a go with everybody. Um, the only one that actually got me was that Hellcat. Yeah, I couldn't get traction, because uh, I have got slicks for it at home, but I didn't put them on. Yeah, so next year, Hellcat. <laughs> With Cruz Martinborough's successful four days done and dusted for 2018, it won't be long until plans are back underway for the next one. If you look around, some of these cars have four stickers on them because we're year four, um, and they will have five or six or seven uh, after a few more years. So I think that's all you can hope for is that people have a good time and just want to come back. It's really hard to describe a four-day event that you know everyone takes away a different experience from. I mean, essentially, you know, you could say it's it's four days. You get to drive your car around and experience some uh, great wire for countryside. But really, I think the best way to 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 know what we're all about is just enter, come and have a go. 400 entries, and um, no doubt we will uh, sell out again next year. So yeah, come along, and it's the best way really to know what we're all about. Okay, thanks to Mount Shop, it's time to raid us some sheds. This week, we're off to check out Jamie's collection in the hills of the capital. Oh goodness, I've been into cars ever since I can remember. I think my mum bought me a pile of Matchbox cars when I was a small child and it started there. Some call it an obsession. <laughs> sort of start with one and then you see something else you like and if you've got the money, will you buy it? And and suddenly you've got two and there's a third one you see and it just it just grows from there. You, you never, I never have, um, set out to have a big collection of cars, but it's just the way it ended up. The collection as it sits takes a bit to absorb. This isn't what you'd call a small building and it's something of a surprise in its location, nestled in the hills overlooking downtown Wellington. But Jamie has managed to fill the place to capacity and then some. The parking's tight around here even by big city standards. And while there are a couple of deviations from the script, Jamie describes them as lowering the tone. It's plain to see what ticks the boxes for him. 50s to early 60s American Fords and plenty of them, with a side serving of Edsel long roofs for company. They weren't as old when I started. <laughs> but we just like that era of cars and it's not really the age of them, it's the style of them. Cars with fins on especially. I really don't know. I mean, used to see them driving around the streets here and they were always pretty cool, so that's what we always wanted and went from there. A 
And while it's the US body styles that rule the roost, there are a few right-hand drive numbers scattered throughout too. The lefties of the lineup were sourced both here and stateside. I've been collecting cars for the last 30 odd years, you know, so it's taken a while to get this many. A lot of cars I've found locally advertised over the years. Some cars were bought from the States when we've been over there. You just sort of see them and it's, that's the car you have to have sort of thing. Lots of two doors and stuff like that because we only had the four door, the cheap models that were assembled here. So it's a chance to get something a bit different. As you get older, your taste change a bit and you start seeing cars with accessories on that you've never seen before. And you go, oh, that's pretty cool, you know. So you go after stuff like that. What's also very impressive here is that much of the contents of this building are drivable. The tough task of choosing what vehicle to take on any given day is more of a practical decision. Probably the closest one to the door that's got a warrant rego. <laughs> it's just a bit of a full-time job really, just about, you know, but the good thing is, is you don't have to keep it going all the time. If, you, if you've had enough and uh, things aren't working out, well you just stop and take the other car out. <laughs> And as far as Jamie's 50s Ford Bug goes, it would seem the end is nowhere close by. The other shed would suggest there's always a way around any attempt to restrict the collection within the main four walls. Well, I thought I could, but I was wrong. <laughs> there is no limit. It's just how much space you've got. Every week, we're giving our viewers the chance to win a 10 Tools and Maguire's gift pack worth 250 bucks. Simply go to themotorhood.com and follow the 10 Tools Muscle Garage link. Plus, by entering our weekly draws, at the end of the series, one lucky viewer will win a 10 Tools 460-piece automotive toolkit, a complete Maguire's car care pack, and a $500 mount shop voucher. The total value of this grand prize is almost five grand. Good luck everyone. Teng Tools Muscle Garage was proudly brought to you by Teng Tools. Get organized. Mount Shop, undercar specialists. Maguires, people who love cars, love Maguires. And Need a Car, the easy way to research and buy cars online.